How's everyone doing today? Awesome. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our press conference this morning with DC United General Manager Dave Casper and Head Coach Hernan Lasada. For today, we'll take questions for Dave Casper first, followed by questions for Hernan Lasada afterwards. Many, if not all of you are already very familiar with this by now, but please go ahead, use the raise hand function on your screen if you want to ask a question. I will call on individuals one by one to unmute you and then you will ask your question. Once again, we'll start with questions for Dave Casper. Feel free to raise your hands now and then we'll get to Hernan Lasada next. All right, let's get started. I see Steve Goff has a question first. Steve, go ahead. Hey Dave, thanks for your time. What, uh, where do things stand um, with uh, player acquisitions, possible player acquisitions, and also uh, Paul Ariola's situation possibly going uh, on a short-term loan? Sure. Um, you know, now that, uh, you know, Hernan is on board, we will be uh, discussing with him in, in the coming weeks. And we've, we already have a good idea after the interview process uh, of uh, sort of his short list of positions. Uh, that we'll be focusing on. So that's something that we will now address. It was important for us to wait uh, until we, we finalize the coach to really dig in deep and, and address uh, the player personnel. With regards to Paul, um, it's ongoing discussions with the club. Um, they're up against, I guess, a time clock here with, uh, with a, Janu uh, a January 31st deadline. So uh, something we'll be obviously engaging with, with Swansea uh, in the coming days here. Thank you, Dave. We'll go to Jason Anderson next. Jason, go ahead. Hi, Dave. Uh, thanks for speaking with us. Um, you know, obviously, just yesterday you had to manage the the draft and the dynamic. Obviously, this time is a uh, quite a bit different. Um, I was curious uh, your thoughts on going through this, picking players uh, in the context of trying to pick players with. Hernan's style in mind, but not necessarily his uh, direct input since he hasn't most likely hasn't seen a lot of college soccer at this point. Correct. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a very fair question. Um, we certainly are, are in tune with his style of play, um, the different types of systems, the attacking, defending principles uh, he uses in his game model. Um, so certainly taking that into account, uh, you know, uh, weighed heavily in our decision making yesterday. Thank you, Dave. We'll go to Emily Olson next. Emily, go ahead. Hey, Dave, thanks for taking the time. Um, just a question about the process and how you got to Hernan. Um, can you kind of take us through how you narrowed down the ca uh, candidates, that process a little bit, and then when he became uh, on your, your radar in that process? Sure. Um, yeah, good morning, Emily. So listen, the first step was us as an organization with our ownership, um, Stuart Mayers and myself, Sam Porter, was really to, to come up with a criteria, a set of criteria that we were looking for uh, that could guide us through the process. And from there, identifying candidates, you know, we wanted to uh, uh, come up with a, a, you know, a very broad range of, of, of candidates from domestic uh, or domestic leagues, from international, from national team programs, um, you know, and then we started the process. I think by my count, we interviewed 31 people, which is, is, a, is a big process. Um, very interesting process. Very, very interesting. Speaking to a lot of great minds uh, around the globe. Um, from the 31, we narrowed it down to, you know, approximately six contenders um, and began sort of a second uh, wave of, of interviews uh, where there was uh, the same set of deliverables that we wanted uh, coming back to us from each of the candidate um, so that we could compare apples to apples with, with everyone. Um, you know, and, and our, our, our goal was always by sort of the holidays to have something in place and, and we missed it by a couple of weeks, but we ended up with uh, the person that we uh, were very, very happy with and, and very pleased. And just a, a quick follow up, what would you say uh, caused the biggest delay in kind of missing that window just by a little bit? Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of factors that goes into this, uh, into the process, you know, as you sort of go from uh, the first phase to the second phase to sort of narrowing down the final sort of few candidates. There, there are a lot of, lot of things, um, you know, that factor in. So it's just, 
it, it's a it's a time element. It, it takes a great deal of time, being very thorough um, in the process. And again, we we knew what we were looking for. And and once we got to Hernan, um, he he was a guy that that uh, had he been there from day one, the process would have gone quicker uh, because he had everything we were looking for. Thank you, Dave. We'll go to Dave Johnson. Dave, go ahead. Hey, David, just as, as you were just talking about this, uh, 31 candidates, a lot of candidates, you just kind of mentioned if he had been there from day one, it, it might have been a, a quicker process. Is there anything you can share about, you know, why he really jumped out, you know, beyond taking all the boxes? Because obviously it's about personal relationships you have to, to develop. Was there there's something that said, you know what, this is our guy? Sure. Uh, yeah, very good question, Dave. Listen, I think um, his leadership style, uh, he's a smart leader. Um, he talked a lot, a lot in, in the interviews about connecting with players and the, the, this modern generation of players and how to get, how to, get to them. Um, uh, so he talked a lot about his relationships and even all the research we did, uh, you, you, you saw a lot of players talk about their relationship with Hernan uh, and how he gets the most out of players, right? Uh, making players the best player they can be. Um, so that, you know, that rang through and through uh, our process with, with Hernan. Obviously, his playing style uh, synced with what we want to do moving forward, which is we want to be a team that's going to be on the front foot, uh, playing, you know, high energy systems in both attack and defense. And, and that's Hernan. That, that's the way he wants to play. He's very committed to it. And he could do it in many different ways. And we saw that uh, with different formations, different styles against different opponents. Um, so, so we saw that he, we, we liked the fact that in his first job, he, he took a team, um, and punched above his weight and got promoted into the first division because of COVID, uh, he had one week to prepare for his first game in the first division. And he started off and, you know, three months in, he was, I think in second place, he was a leader for a short period, but in second place of the Jupiter league. Um, so you saw a guy that could you know, move the needle and, 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 and when the bar is raised, he could, he could respond to that. Um, you know, he's, he's a young coach on the rise. He, you know, he's very tactically astute. And that was a big, big part of this is finding a guy with a real soccer brain, a guy who's possessed 24 seven. And that's what he is. I mean, he, he, he's a nonstop worker, a real student of the game. He was number one in his class in the UEFA pro license in Belgium, which is a big deal. Um, Belgium's you know, pro license program is is top, um, and and just like we we liked his personality, very humble guy, a collaborative guy, someone we felt we could work with, and, and really the the last thing is someone we felt we could uh, who could come here and build something with us, with our platforms, our pl uh, pro player pathway, um, from our academy, and again, it was very very important for us to find someone who. Um, has a track record and a willingness to, to develop young players and play young players. It, it takes guts to do it. Um, and, and Hernan has that. He comes from, a, you know, from Argentina where that's what they do. They give opportunities to young players. And, and he, you know, he made it in Europe, had a long career. Um, so we talked a lot about our pro pathway between our academy and Loudoun United into the first team. You know, and, and he was very, very excited, very intrigued about that, about the infrastructure we've built. Uh, which will culminate with our training facility being finalized in July or August of this year. So, um, yeah, you, just, you know, I would say all of those things, Dave. Great. Thanks, Dave. We'll take three more questions. We'll go to Steve Goff. Steve. Dave, what's it like now um, in this strange times of ours? I mean, you've, you've never met Hernan face to face. He's never come to visit. He doesn't, you know, he's never been to Washington. Um, trying to get a team together, not knowing when you're going to actually get on the field together, when he'll arrive because of the visa situation. What's, what's it like now and what's it going to be like over the next couple of weeks trying to uh, move forward with this club? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think for us, yeah, we, we obviously just finished this long process, um, which was very time consuming for, for me. Um, we spent quite a bit of time on the draft, a lot of time because we had, we had a high pick, the highest pick in, you know, in, in a while. Um, I think we traded away a, high pick a few years ago, but we planned on using it. Um, so we, we, we spent a lot of time and give a lot of credit to Stuart Mayers and Ryan Martin and Chad Ashton for, for really getting stuck in um, and watching a lot of players, which was hard to do with, 
with no real live soccer other than ACC that you could see on TV and you know going through our notes from the last couple of years of, of scouting so but but now that now that that's passed it's really about you know focusing on players and you know again a big part of the deliverables uh, in this process with Hernan was a, a, a thorough evaluation of our roster so as part of that process he's identified um, you know his key areas that he wants to strengthen and and really that's what we're going to focus on and Hernan in the next you know whatever period of time it takes him to get to get his visa will will you know pack up his life he's been I'm sure he can speak to that he's been in Europe for 12 13 14 years so he's got a lot a lot of loose ends to uh you know button up there and and take a breath listen you know uh he just went through um you know a full 18 months of soccer um between the again the the second division club and the first division and and the covid break and the guy needs a break he needs to clear his head and and get, and get energized He's got plenty of energy, but uh, I think that's what he's going to be doing in the, in the coming weeks here. We'll go to Pablo next. Pablo, go ahead, Nick. Hey, Dave. I hope you're doing well. Um, I, I'm curious, obviously, you guys in this process interviewed a number of candidates who were pretty familiar with MLS, um, guys like Chris Armas, Ezra. I, I'm curious if hiring Hernan feels riskier and if it feels more ambitious than some of the other candidates that you guys were considering and even got pretty close to, to hiring? Um, it, it's definitely uh, something we thought about, uh, you know, weighing a domestic candidate versus an international candidate. We, we, we always felt all along that the international candidate, if we were going to make the hire, had, had, a, had a knock it out of the park, and, and he did that. Um, you know, he's, he's a young modern thinker, a proven track record. Again, we, we connected with him. We feel he's a very collaborative person and can work within the constraints we have in our league. He, he wants to learn all the, the mechanisms and, uh, you know, the way we can acquire players and the, and the salary cap. He's very intrigued by that. And, and it, he really wanted this job. He wanted to be here and embrace that. And that was a big part of it, Pablo, is, um, you know, you could tell right away when you spoke to other international candidates um, that may, maybe probably wasn't going to work um, because of that barrier to not be you willing to accept, uh, you know, the, the, the various things in our league, um, the various rules and regulations of, of how we've built this great league. Um, but he thought it was a league on the rise and going to be, a, it is a top league and will continue to be one of the top leagues in the world as we move forward. I mean, look at all the top international coaches coming in now into our league and the top players. Uh, and a lot of players moving out, young players on transfers. I mean, we, this is a real league, um, and it's going to continue to grow. And he he embraced that, um, you know, and and very much wanted this job to the point where he left his team in midseason, uh, you know, where he could find no question in six months, a year, two years time, a, a, you know, a much bigger club in Europe to manage. There's no question about that. So we felt we're getting, a, you know, a guy on the rise at the right time. Um, and, you know, we're very, very comfortable with this decision. Thanks, Dave. We'll take just a couple more. We'll go to Charlie Bohm. Charlie. Good morning, Dave. I wanted to first just confirm uh, what you mentioned about the training facility. So is that, are you guys going to be able to start using that this summer? Um, that's the plan right now, barring any delays. Okay. Um, and the other thing was a, dra a draft uh, question. So we, we, there are several players that are, um, involved or at least have some connection or experience with the USL team were drafted uh, right. yesterday. And I just wanted to get your sense of, are there complications with, with players' rights in that regard? Is that something that you, that you guys had to deal with? Has there been a, a clear policy laid out from league headquarters? How do you deal with those situations where guys have USL ties? Yeah, there, um, there's clear regulations that were laid out uh, from the league within the last week that, that address this. So, There'll be no issues. Great, thanks, Dave. We'll go to Tom Boger. Tom. Hey, Dave, thanks for doing this. <clears throat> nice to speak with you. Um, I know you just kind of touched on it a little bit, um, but I was wondering if you can kind of go more into what were those first conversations like? I, and again, I know that you just alluded to he really wanted this job. Um, he, he believes in MLS, but from you know your side of it, did you do have to sell him on it or anything? And, and kind of what did that uh, go like? Well, the first thing I said to him when I looked at his CV was uh, he played at Independiente, I think, in 2005, and we got arguably the, the, the first great playmaker, number 10, 
uh, from Argentina, Christian Gomez. So that was my first question was, hey, do you know Gomito played here? We talked about Marcel, Marcelo Gallardo, Lucho. We talked about the Argentine number 10s um, and that quite possibly he could be the next number 10 uh, playmaker, but from the bench. So uh, it, was a, it was a great uh, you know, lead in. Um, he was not aware that, that uh, Marcelo played here for a year. He knew that Christian did, again, because they came from the same club. Um, and we talked about the gateway that uh, I took a little credit for and opening up uh, the market in Argentina. You saw a flood of uh, number 10s coming into the league. So we spoke about that. That was really the first uh, icebreaker, if you will, with, uh, with Hernan. And by the way, I, I finally watched his highlights last night for the first time as a player. And uh, I have to say, that I think I'm, he could probably still play now. Uh, some pretty magic stuff there. That's awesome, Dave. We'll take one more question. We'll go to Jose Umania. Jose. Hey, Dave. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, what is the timeline moving forward in terms of filling out the rest of the coaching staff as well as any late player acquisitions going forward? Bernard will be speaking to uh, you know both Chad and, and Zach, but it's it's uh, it's our intention that they'll be part of the staff. That was part of our discussion uh, in the process, and Hernan will look to identify uh, another assistant coach, um, and really that will be rounding out our staff. 